Crawford, I'll start with you. Of the three things that we expect from Apple today, a new iPhone, possibly two new iPhones, one with a big screen, one with a, one with a smaller screen, uh, an iWatch, let's call it that, just because it's easy, and this, this digital payment system, which has the potential to be the biggest business for Apple? Well, uh, near term, uh, right out of the gate, the biggest business for Apple will be uh, the 4.7 or 4.9 inch phone. Uh, that's going to hit the sweet spot of the, pick your number, between 150 million and 250 million installed base upgrades that, as Corey indicated, people are just chafing to up a new phone. They want bigger phones. It probably will not be the five and a half inch phone because that's, I think, going to be more of an Asia play where characters are more complex and people want bigger phones. But I think you are going to see that that product, that 4.7 or 4.9 inch product, will be the biggest product in the near term. In and the long and term? It, yeah, longer but, term. Yeah, longer term, Apple's got a network. Apple's got an ecosystem. When they put technology that's even existed in other people's platforms like NFC to enable mobile payments, potentially in an iWatch, that longer term could change the way we pay for things over the next five years. That could be a huge home run that could now involve Visa, MasterCard, other, 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 uh, other payments companies. That's going to take some time to play out. But that could be massive in the long term. Larry, we're talking about what surprises could we see today from a product standpoint. From an investment standpoint, from the stock performance, what are you expecting? Well, I, I think uh, what's important here is that Apple's going up $200 billion this year already. And each point I is see you six, gloating. You six, see him kind of smiling Six, six yeah. billion dollars. Uh, and the, the scale of the numbers is amazing, but uh, in one fourth quarter alone, uh, Apple uh, incremented its cash flow by $9 billion, which meant in one fourth quarter, the uh, 10 multiple on that, the uh, stock, uh, the value of it went up $90 billion. And what's important really here is that Apple has about $57 billion of, uh, of cash flow. And this these product launches are basically going to ensure that that cash flow goes up. And the reality is Apple can't spend it. So there's just going to be mountains of cash coming back to the shareholders. And one of the reasons the stock is up is the board has been very responsible at distributing cash. So you look at this company versus companies of its ilk, and let's call them General, uh, uh, General Mills, Coca-Cola, very, very cash-rich consumer product companies. Apple's free cash flow generating ability, its brand value, are better than these companies, and uh, it sells at a lower value. So from a stock point of view, this is basically more of the same, and I really can't ask for anything more. Uh, the upgrade cycle, I think, is going to give me more because, as was said earlier, they're in the sweet spot. So uh, when, you, when isn't Apple in the sweet spot? Well, uh, I they think... They were in the doghouse for a little while. Yeah, they were, yeah. I, I, I think the, the thing is that they suck you into this ecosystem and you can't really get out. I mean, I'm more or less married to my iPhone and iPad. Uh, they go with me everywhere. Uh, I, they have improved my, my life, my business proficiency. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, upgrade it as, uh, as soon as my contract is out. Uh, and I think I'm, I'm right in the center of the fairway in terms of consumers. Uh, they've got me. You know, I Eric, love it. I think that I and think I'm that the, pay more the money payment to system keep it up. too is to, to to Crawford's point too. I think that the payment system, you know, the economics of that, which they very well might not tell us today, that's the biggest delta here, right? With the iPhone business is going to be a much bigger business, but the delta and what could be a, a, a giant market for them, Apple with 800 million credit cards that they already have because of their App Store business and their iTunes business and so on. Add to that the payment possibilities. We see more and more merchants, particularly small business merchants, using the iPad as a cash register. The notion that that ecosystem goes in a business-to-business -business format, where you've got uh, the credit card processors going through the iPod, and, uh, or the iPad being used by the merchant. You've got the iPhone being used by the users. An NFC payment system, depending on what Apple's take there is, and in, and if indeed, indeed if they can lower costs to the merchants, that could be a big and growing business over time that could really add meaningfully to Apple's top line and perhaps even bottom line and free cash flow, as, as Larry suggests. Crawford, you want to weigh in? Well, I guess what's, what's interesting here is that this is the power of the platform. So 
to the, the comments that were just made, let's not rule out a scenario here. About five years ago, Apple bought Authentech. That's the company that gave you the fingerprint reader. So you can see a, a potential multi-factor authentication here where you're using an iWatch. You log in with your finger and you light up the NFC to make the payment on your iWatch. So now, to Corey's point, it's the, the, it's, it's, it's the triple play, right? You've got someone buying an iPhone, you've got them using the iWatch, and you've got them making payments and Apple getting that payment and sharing that with Visa and the merchant. So when Apple unlocks the power of this platform and give you those technologies all working together, that's potentially very, very powerful. Crawford, what's the best analogy to draw? Payments are to Apple as what is to what? What's a good corporate <laughs> analogy? Uh, boy, um, Payments are, boy, uh, th 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 there's many. Uh, Ford is to tires. General Motors is to tires. I mean, basically, this is something that they could be very, very tied together. Now, that's a wear item, but it's a replenishment item. It's an item that keeps on giving over time. So uh, I can put a better one, but that's one just off the top of my head. What, what, what comes to your mind, Larry? Oh, I, I think uh, the, the key thing is what was discussed is the fingerprint application. Uh, my password book now is seven pages long. And if Apple can tie in the payment system, the ecosystem, uh, the 700 million credit card users, the 150 million people in the sweet spot with the fingerprint technology that guarantees the security problem. I mean, what's been in the news the last couple weeks? Home Depot, a breach. J. P. Target, Morgan. a breach. J.P. Morgan, a breach. Fingerprint technology should cure the breach problem and put uh, these very bad cyber criminals uh, out of business. That, when it comes to market, in my opinion, even with the market price of the stock as high as it is, could be a 40, 50 percent move in the stock. 40 to 50 percent? Absolutely. Proverb, Absolutely. what do you say to that? Well, I was just about to go back to your metaphor, and I think I have a better one for you. Yeah, Apple, right. is to payments is, Apple is to payments as the NFL is to television broadcasting. I mean, For basically, real? NFL's a great. Yeah, that's another NFL's level right there. Absolutely. I mean, this is a whole different level of experience and how you could touch this thing every single day. I mean, in a different way. Touch it in ways you'd never use it. So now you're competing against non-consumers, non-consumption. You're, you're basically expanding into a new market that you weren't ever serving before that's exponentially larger than what you're using today. How many times you pull out your visa as opposed to, or cash, as opposed to you know, using your iPhone for other things? There isn't a retailer on the planet who doesn't think they're paying visa and MasterCard too much money that's as well. great. How Point. That's yes. a great point. How is it that Google right, didn't figure right. this out before so, Apple, though? Google has the Google Wallet. Google also, has right, more so, Android phones out there than anybody else, than Apple does by far. Well, you don't know that Apple's figured it out, Eric. I well, mean, no, no, no. But I'm you know, all I just know is whoever does is, figure it out. True. I, the opportunity is so obvious. How come? I mean, Google had a head right, start. Right. Exactly. So let's let's look at this. So. Look at this. So what Crawford is saying about the, the fingerprint identification, what if Apple goes to the merchants and goes to the credit card processors and says, we will take the risk if you let us charge the, and use your connections with the merchants, let your connections with the banks, we will take the risk over if you will be willing to charge the merchants 25 or 50 basis points less. The merchants would love that. The, the credit card processors would love that. And because Apple's got the fingerprint authentication, because Apple's got perhaps multifaceted authentication, they can have lower risk because of of those devices and, and actually have less risk. So the potential is there to use technology to solve the platform, to use their market breadth to be there to make this happen rapidly. Uh, they're in a strong position to do this and it might be the way this whole thing is going to work out.